just yesterday I was discussing about one concept called money. I said in that what is money, what are the functions of money, why people hold money in their hands, how money is generated or I said what is the evolution of money and in that I started saying about the barter system and then we have said commodity trading and then I said metallic money and then in the metallic money I said two things called full bodied money and token currencies with that I have entered the so called um, paper currency and then in India who is the authority who is giving this coins and who is giving this uh, the so called paper currency and what do you mean by legal tender, what is limited legal tender, what is unlimited legal tender, in India up to what, what you call it as limited legal tender as per which act we have discussed that and then I have entered into the so called bank money, in the bank money there are three things, one is the so called check truncation system of NPCI or the checkbook, demand deposits and the last one is commercial bills or e-paper bills, right, paper bills is known as the bank money and then we have entered into digital money or the so called card money, in that I started discussing about various types of cards, debit card and credit card and before entering into that point. I said about one important organization known as NPCI, what are the various softwares that it has developed and we have seen some terminology including to the so called RBI's terminology such as the so called core banking solutions and then uh, we have discussed one thing called e kuber these systems and what are the functions which is done by NPCI as such. Until that we have discussed and I have stopped it there, let me continue from there, is it clear? whatever we have discussed in the uh, study, this is what briefly what we discussed. Let me continue from there where I have stopped. Today I am going to continue with that, right, card money, cards can be two types, credit card and debit card, this is not that important. We know this credit is something like giving loan, even though in, in your bank if you do not have amount they will give you loan, this is debit card is your money, whatever you have deposited you can take it and this is called debit card. The only thing that you have to know is and earlier cards are like magnetic cards. magnetic cards, where the information of the account holder, your information will be there on a black magnetic strip, if you have observed this before 2019, your ATM's cards used to come with a black magnetic strip, right, that black magnetic strip used to go at times. So what it stores is, this is going to store your personal information related to the bank, bank information. Now as it is susceptible to hacking, you know people can easily break this code, as a result the security features are very less in this magnetic cards. From 2019 what RBI said is, RBI said you have to discontinue, all the banks has to discontinue this magnetic type of cards, from then onwards they establish one card that is called whatever the cards that you have, that you have received after 2019, you will find them as E. EVM cards, EVM cards, what do I mean by EVM cards? The short name of EVM is Euro Payment Visa Master Card Payment, EMV, Euro Master Card Visa Payment, right, these are the card that is going to come now. In that there will be no magnetic card, rather than that magnetic card they will be placing one chip on your card, right, you can find some chip on your card and that chip you will be storing the information, right. This is how now it is very difficult to break this chip or in order to find out the features in this chip, as our technology is advanced, they have advanced with this card and today no bank is issuing the so called magnetic tape cards, but what they are issuing is they are issuing the so called chips and this can be of two types, contact and contactless, 
contact cause contact phase. What do you mean by contact? You have to keep that into the point of sales machine in order to operate it. For example, if you are using it right at some place, right, without this Wi-Fi technology, without this RFID technology, the bank card will be inserted into that point of sales machine. There will be a machine to operate it and in order to swipe it, they will go into contact. Again, there is contact less. Without contacting it, just by nearing, getting your card very near to the so-called uh, that point of sales machine, it will read and automatically you have to type your pin. That is the thing, right? And the technology here, what you are using in this contactless cards is RFID technology, radio frequency identification technology, just like the technology that you are using in fast tags that we discussed yesterday, right? So radio frequency identification technology and this technology will, bas will be asked in science and technology. In science and technology, they will ask what are near field communication technology, near field. Whenever you are very near to that field, you will get detected. That is called near field communication technology. That is something related to science and technology component. But as far as my point is considered, cards today, whatever the cards that you are getting, either that is a credit card or a debit card, the cards are like this. Got this? Is it clear? Debit cards and credit cards and how the types of cards are there. So in this, they don't ask this question. They only ask in contactless cards, which type of technology is being used the technology is RFID technology. Moving on. Now, after this, you have one concept. The latest concept of cards is tokenization of cards. Now, RBI has bought it recently, tokenization of card system. What do it mean by tokenization of card. For every card, what they will do? They will generate a token. They will generate a token. What is this token? Say for example, earlier whenever you are doing some operations with the ATM card or credit card, what they will ask? Say for example, if you are purchasing something by paying the ATM card or uh, credit card, debit card or credit card, what they used to ask? They used to store your information on that uh, website itself. Say for example, if you are logging into the so-called Amazon, take for example. In that Amazon, what they will do? They will ask your bank details, what is the name, uh, card number, what is the name in the card, and then what is CVV? They will store it. The only thing that you have to do is, immediately next time when you are purchasing, you have to click the details and automatically every information will come. Then if you click, then there will be a pass, password that will be generating to your mobile and then if you are typing it, the transaction will be completed. This is how normally uh, it used to be done. But now there is a problem with this system that you are doing. What is that? Say for example, if she is doing the transactions and in that mobile, if the mobile is lost, if someone is catching hold of that mobile, the only thing is I have to type these details of Amazon. If I know the access of our Amazon or anything, I can misuse the information that is already stored in that websites. Are you understanding? Already I have uploaded all the information and it will be ready to hack at any point of time. So there is, you, your card details are going to get compromised if you are storing it. Right. So in a fastless or why you are storing it? This is getting stored for fast access. So you are storing the original card number original card name, the name on the card and original CVV that is on the card. Now what RBI did is in order to overcome this problem as many uh, agencies are doing the same thing. RBI has asked many agencies not to collect this but they are not following the RBI's advice. So what they asked customers is rather than giving your original number and name that is on your card, we generate a, you request for generation of a token you request for a generation of a token. How? Go to the net banking and ask for a token on your card. So rather than giving your original, for your original card number, they will give you a token number. They will give you a token number. Now that token number can be used for transactions. That token number can be used for transactions. Now if you are storing that token number, once you are doing that transaction, you will get double time 
confirmation, double confirmation. One confirmation is, first thing is, say for example, rather than filling the original card details, I will uh, fill this token number and whenever I am doing next payment, the bank will send a message that whether this card is belonging to you or not and then if I proceed, then they will send the so called pin and then I can proceed. This is to add the layers of security for your transactions, are you understanding? This is called tokenization of card which is in news as simple as this. They are going to give a token for your card so that you can conceal the original card details and you can use the new numbers. If someone is stealing this or if someone is hacking this number, then you can be confirmed that, okay, this is not my transaction. Are you understanding? So this is like a double uh, layer of protection that it is giving. This is called tokenization of card that RBA has recently developed. We have to let us, let us wait and see how it is going to function in the original scenario. After this, after to card tokenization, there is one thing called merchant discount rate, merchant discount rate, MDR. Now have you ever observed like for example if you are going in a bike and if you are giving a card uh, at a petrol filling station, now those members they will not accept the card for some reason, did you ever face this? They say that sir, cards are not accepted here, either cash or do through this UPI payment, right? Have you observed why they don't accept the so-called card payment? That is because of one issue that is called MDR, merchant discount rate. Now what exactly is this merchant discount rate? In order to understand this, let's try to understand first what happens whenever you are using a debit card for your payments or a credit card for your payments. Say for example, if she is the customer and she is coming to buy something, and if I accept that card, I will be using a point of sales machine to swipe that card and to detect it. So look at the agencies who are involved in this transaction. There is a customer, customer is having a card and this card belongs to her mobile, some bank. Say that she is SBI customer and SBI customer, SBI bank has released her one credit card or debit card. Now she brings this to me. I am a merchant here, she is coming here to buy something and I have one thing called POS machine, point of sales machine. What is this machine? The machine that you find for swiping, right? That is, the name is point of sales machine. Now, here what I will be doing when I am buying this point of sales machine, I will ask that fellow to calibrate that point of sales machine to my account, right? say I have account in ICICI. So the merchant is giving SBI card, now what I will do, I will take that card, I will swipe here and I will type the amount that has to be reduced and that will be credited to my bank, right. And the, on the card I said yesterday, on the card there are some payment gateways. In order to provide that transaction, in order to provide that software, you have two payment gateways like Visa and MasterCard, the indigenous version of this is Rupee. We discussed that, Rupee. They provide the access. What they do is, they provide this interoperability. From SBI to ICICI, if I want to do it, I should have that data ready, right? That was provided earlier by Visa and MasterCard, but after NPCI has come, this interoperability has been done by NPCI through indigenous payment system that is called Rupee system. These Rupee, MasterCard, Visa, Europe, all these are known as payment gateways. Payment gateway. What is this payment gateway? In order to do transaction from one bank to other bank, I have to cross that gate. So that is provided by this payment gateway system and that is MasterCard, Visa card, Rupee card. So whenever I am taking the card from her and whenever I am swiping it in the POS machine, there is one more player who is playing here, this is this fellow, right? So for using this point of sales machine, for using this transaction, 
merchant needs to pay amount to this payment gateway merchant needs to pay this to or merchant needs to pay that amount to the so called their charges to this so he is charged on that the merchant is charged on it now earlier there was a rule in india that rbi said whatever the payment gateway charges are there that has to be borne by the merchant and it should not be passed on to the customer this should not be done to the customer so merchant discount rate what do you mean by merchant discount rate it is the rate that is discounted at the place of merchant which is collected at the place of merchant itself so if she is doing a business of say for example 1000 rupees with me next i will swipe that card for that 1000 rupees for 10 rupees or 20 rupees whatever they charge the master card visa card i have to give them then only sbi account will be credited into my icici account because they open the gate then only right i have to give that 10 or 20 rupees that rupees is known as uh, mdr now that 10 rupees or 20 rupees i cannot charge and i cannot ask her that you have to pay 1020 rupees because this is not permitted in india as per rbi norms so uh, what rbi said earlier is until 2021 it was present what they said is if you are using point of sales machine as this is being done by the merchant for his work so they said that you should not pass it to it so this was charged on the merchant now did you understand why these fellows refused to accept the cards because if they are accepting they are they have to pay money from their end as a result they don't accept the cards but rather they will ask you in the form of cash or in the form of upi payment for upi payment these things are not necessary why not necessary because you are not swiping that card on that card itself for interoperability you have master card and visa card today upi are functioning in npci uh, developed technology what is the technology e-cubeer not e-cubeer e-cubeer is of rbi uh, national uh, financial switch national financial switch is the technology that is being used by npci for this interoperability are you understanding right so there you are using national financial switch in that hence you pay you are not being charged there but only for the cards as the master gateway is being provided by this organization they have to pay now see this visa and master card are euro payment all these are foreign uh, technologies they are developed by foreign countries this is indigenous technology as a result what government did this is developed by npci now npci is not collecting anything for this transaction through rupee that is the reason whenever you are using rupee cards right they will allow rupee cards at time at uh, some point of sales machines the reason is they are not going to charge extra so this is all the banking system which works on the margins that is why this is present but the logic is this not this what you have to understand is what is merchant discount rate who will get charged in the mdrs it will be the merchant don't think that it is customer who is going to pay the amount it is the merchant now look at this if the merchant is not accepting the card payment if he is asking cash then government will face a problem called digital government is promoting digital transactions do everything digital don't depend on cash less cash more comfort that is what government of india is saying so minimize your cash payments rather than that uh, increase your digital payments that is what government of india is saying now if the merchant is not accepting the so called card then obviously this is going to hit what digital transactions are going to hit as a result what government of india did in the times of covid 19 and after demonetization particularly after demonetization they have reduced drastically this mdr charges on the merchants today it is present but not to that level which they used to collect earlier so minimum charges they have to pay as a result you see the acceptance of cards everywhere today because mdr charges are very very less today right so this is what the system is as far as merchant discount rate is considered if you have not understood this completely fine at least remember this merchant discount rate is not charged on the customer that is the bottom line of the story not charged on customer 
రిమెంబర్ ద టర్మ్ ఇట్ సెల్ఫ్ మర్చెంట్ డిస్కౌంట్ చాలా మంది ఏమనుకుంటారు అంటే మర్చెంట్ డిస్కౌంట్ డిస్కౌంట్ మర్చెంట్ తీసుకున్నారు అనుకుంటే కస్టమర్స్ అని పెడతారు రైట్ దట్ ఈస్ రాంగ్ రైట్ మర్చెంట్ డిస్కౌంట్ రేట్ ఈజ్ సంథింగ్ విచ్ ఈస్ గివెన్ టు ఆర్ చార్జ్ ఆన్ మర్చెంట్ ఇట్ సెల్ఫ్ రైట్ దేర్ ఆర్ఎఫ్ఐడి టెక్నాలజీ హియర్ ఎండిఆర్ క్లియర్ లెట్ మీ ఎంటర్ ఇన్ టు ద నెక్స్ట్ వన్ ATM machines again they don't ask this question but if you are writing so if you are writing some uh, local exams they might ask this question ATMs automated teller machines now what they will ask is what are the types of ATMs ATMs can be classified into three types one is own labeled ATMs own labeled ATMs second one is brown labeled atms next one is white label atms atms are classified into three one is own label second one is brown label third one is white label atms what is the difference between these three simple own label if you go to an uh, sbi bank the atm that will be present next to atm uh, that sbi bank will be having the logo of sbi right which means the atm is operated by the atm is operated by whom the bank itself the atm is operated by the bank itself what do you mean by operated by bank who will keep money into this atm it is the same bank who will guard this atm a security guard appointed by atm uh, that bank itself right if there is a, any problem here this is the bank who is going to uh, correct it are you understanding hence the entire operation will be done by the respective bank operation and maintenance is done by respective bank that is called own labeled atms if you look if you carefully observe the banks on the banks there will be a logo depending upon the logo you can identify which bank atm it is right so the respective bank will operate it the respective bank will maintain that uh, atms and that atms are known as own labeled atms now brown labeled atms are brown labeled atms are owned by the bank brown labeled atms are owned by the bank but they are operated and maintained by private agencies operated and maintained by private agencies they give this service of operation and maintenance to external agencies right so these are brown label atms brown label atms are owned by bank the amount that the cash that they keep inside this bank will be from the bank itself okay and they will be operating so brown label atms operation and maintenance will be done by the private players they will be giving contract for this operation and maintenance but the bank or the atm will be belonging to bank itself right the installation of that atm keeping money in the atm that money will be also of the bank itself so they will be operating here the next one is white label atms these are the atms which are owned and operated by private players owned operated maintained by private players or non bank authorities what do i mean by private players non bank authorities external ag- external agents private players ante private banks kadu external agents i mean to say that okay external agents say for example uh, if you have seen some atms like tata indica cash atms muthoot finance atms you might have observed here and there right so what are these they are established by muthoot finance they will establish that bank the cash will be kept deep in that and they will be operating that atm right they will have linkage with the so called respective banks in the back end if i am an sbi holder if i have that card if i am going to this atm if they allow interoperability 
that depends upon the bank. Some banks won't allow interoperability. Some ATMs don't allow interoperability. They say that this is for only Axis Bank. This is only for SBI. This is only for Muthut Finance. They say this. Why? Depending upon the background work that they have done for interoperability, they provide you that services. If I leave that, only three things, own labeled, brown labeled, white labeled. Own labeled means that respective bank will be the head, operations, maintenance, everything will be looked by the bank itself. That is the reason why when you look at some ATMs which are near to these banks, bank branches, bank branches, they go on ATM, you say, put work out, because their operation and maintenance will be very difficult. These fellows doesn't know that, how to operate. So that is the reason why they give it to external agents who are good at doing this, right? Bank authorities, custom, right? So external agents, they do this, and white labeled ATMs, this is entirely run for their profits, right? So that is the limit. So white label ATMs, how they get profits, they will keep some limits. After four withdrawals, after five withdrawals, I am going to pay or I am going to uh, uh, cut some extra cash from you, right? I am going to charge you for every extra transaction. So depending upon the number of transactions that you are doing, these labeled ATMs, they, some different banks will have different, uh, uh, different payments, right? So SBI might allow you four times to withdraw without paying and the fifth time they might charge you. ICICI may allow you only for three. That depends upon bank to bank, that depends upon the agent to agent who is forming this based on their own operations, right? This is to withdraw money. L look at, this is to withdraw money. Point of sales machines, any times, any number of times you use, they are not going to charge you. Why? You are not withdrawing the money. Only for withdrawing of money, they are collecting this money. Why they are collecting this money? They have to run the business, like people have to come they have to keep the money in this, they have to guard it. So there is some work which is involved. That is the reason why they charge that amount whenever you are using ATMs. Got it? Right. If understood, good. If you have not understood, just remember own label, SBI, brown label. Bank will be the heading it, operated and maintained by ex private agents, external agents. White label ATMs, everything is by external agents. Right? Which one? Bank. See, Andhra Pragati Gramina, uh, Karnataka Gramina Banks, APGBs. Gramina Banks, again, they will have their own ATMs. Say, for example, when you visited a Gramina Bank, beside it, they will have a separate uh, Gramina Bank ATM for themselves. So that comes under the first one, own bank, own labeled bank. Why they do this is, if it is a Gramina Bank, many people will go to the bank and they will uh, form in a queue to withdraw that amount. In order to reduce the rush at the cash counter, they have established these banks, right? This is what they do. So Gramina Bank, they are own labeled banks. They are not white banks, right? Now, apart from this, you have bank mitras, bank mitras or banking correspondence bank correspondence. This is also known as micro ATMs. They operate like micro ATMs. They operate like micro ATMs. What do you mean by micro ATMs? You might have seen in your villages, right, where a bank authority will be uh, going from village to village, door to door, whoever is having uh, uh, to withdraw money, what they will do, they will call that banking correspondent, they will give their thumb impression and whatever the amount that they have to withdraw, the banking correspondent will give it to them and they will deduct it from uh, their account. This is what normally it is being done, right? So this is called micro ATM. They will not carry ATM from place to place, no. They will carry only a small machine which will recognize the account holder they will just like pay point of sales machine. They will just look at the details. They will come to know, okay, this is the amount that is there in this personal account. Then the bank manager, that bank correspondent will be carrying that account amount. He will be giving that amount and he will be detecting it from the bank. So this is what is done by bank mitras or bank correspondence. The reason is to include financial inclusion. All these are for financial inclusion purposes. 
all these for for financial purposes so bank correspond banking correspondence will have this financial inclusion capacity so this is about small things about uh, uh, atms micro atms micro atms means don't think small atms they are bank mitras or bank correspondence right you understood what is this system good you understood what is card tokenization right rbi allowed it from 2020 magnetic card emv cards you understood which is the technology that is used in fast tag operations fast tag which is the technology rfid radio frequency identification technology who will be operating the uh, which will be the software which will be used to operate atms in the country which will be the software which will be used to operate atms in the country someone said yes sorry you kuber who is saying you kuber your huh? national financial switch see all these payments whatever you are doing that is done by nfs e kuber is something like this is the software used by rbi for its working and for its integration that's it this is that software say for example if uh, if infosys is working all the infosys employees will be working on some software right tata tata will be working on some software every employee will be working on their own software that type of software that rbi has is e kuber are you understanding yes that is national financial switch who has developed it npci there is one more last card that is called which rbi is again trying to moot our government of india is again trying to moot that is called national common mobility card national common mobility card now this is some advanced version that government of india is thinking or ministry of ministry of housing and ministry of housing and urban affairs this is trying to introduce it ministry of housing and urban affairs what is this say for example you will be having credit card you will be having debit card you will be having metro card you will be having aadhar card everything there will be different cards with a person now they wanted to eliminate all this and create only one card that will be acting as a credit card that will be acting as debit card that will be acting as for any payment either that is a metro card or anything so throughout the country they wanted to create one card for a person and that is called national common mobility card this will work as a credit debit traveling card or whatever the other cards that you have in the country right obviously as it is itself is appearing so so combat skeptical right so no one has followed this even the government of india is not followed this so just it was in the proposal stage national ministry of housing and urban affairs why i said as it is in the proposal stage they might ask which ministry has launched this then we will think that it is rbi or this is ministry of finance right this is launched by ministry of housing and urban affairs right em pan led anukunta vilagiga so national common mobility card is the plan of ministry of housing and urban affairs just remember that these are about various card payments now who will be having who is the regulator of card payments in india who is the regulator of card payments in india options a ministry of finance b rbi c npci 4 sebi how many of you say npci is the regulator of card payments in india 
regulator. How many of you say NPCA? How many of you say RBI? How many of you say SEBI? Inkok time na Ministry of Finance. How many of you say? Yendu sari vani yedo gurje pesa in antar hai orena. Look at this. You have written uh, this in the card payment system. Look at the sentence that you have written. What do you have written? RBI is the regulator for this. Yes. Now look at this. RBI is the regulator. Software and everything is provided by NPCI. NPCI is a separate agency. It is not a regulator. There is a lot of difference, right? NPCI is a not-for-profit company. That's it. It is a company. It won't act as a regulator. It is developing software and it is giving it to the people. That's it. But regulators in India, NPCI is not a regulator. Remember that. RBI, SEBI, uh, IFRDA, all these are regulators but not NPCI. NPCI is just a company, that too non-profit company, which is generating you the software and giving it to you, right? It won't regulate that you have to use this, you should not use this. That is the business of some other agency, that is called RBI, right? Now, which act gives RBI this power? Payment and Settlement Act, EO 2007. Which act says that which act says that debasement in, in the debasement of coins is a criminal offence? Is it Coinage Act or RBI Act of 1934? Coinage Act of 2011, right? RBI Act of 1934 says issues that unlimited uh, currency printing of this thing will be under RBI. Coinage Act has two things: who will be printing the coins, who will be printing rupee one note, and debasement of coins is not allowed. This is Coinage Act. This is RBI Act 1934, I will add further when I come to RBI. So until now, I have said under RBI Act, it is the power of the Central Goal, Central Bank of India, that is Reserve Bank of India to print currencies uh, up except that one rupee note, all the other currencies are printed by RBI and whatever the RBI has printed, that is a not a limited legal tender, unlimited legal tender. That is again RBI Act itself. Now, Payment and Settlement Act of 2000, which year? Seven. 2007 allows RBI to regulate this payments. So, Payment and Settlement Act, that is a separate act, okay? Understood? Clear? Right. The next point is, so far we have dis discussed card payments, digital card payments. Now, let us enter into virtual currency the currency that you cannot touch, you cannot see, virtual currency. This is the next advancement of currency that is called virtual currency. It is also known as the digital currency. Right. Let us try to understand this virtual currency or digital currency. Now, virtual or digital is something which is intangible, intangible. You cannot touch it, right? It will be present only in the form of some wallets in your uh, so-called mobile phones, right? It will not be there in your pockets. It will be only in your mobile phones in the form of some digital currency, right? They say that this is digital currency. Virtual currency or digital currency. This type of currency which is developed in electronic platforms, the money which is developed in electronic platforms, which is intangible in its nature are known as virtual currencies. Money which is developed in electronic platforms, which is intangible in its nature are known as virtual currencies. These are also known as, famously known as the crypto currencies. Crypto currency. Crypto currencies. Now, this crypto currencies can be classified into two types.
like grid currency. Peg grid currency. Unpeg grid currency. Unpeg grid currency. What do I mean by peg grid currency? The virtual currency, whatever you are generating, that will be backed up by a physical asset. That will be backed up by a physical asset. The virtual currency, that whatever you are creating, that will be uh, backed up by a physical asset. Consider this. Say, for example, if you are doing transactions in Paytm, right? From where are you getting that money to do that transaction in Paytm? From whose account? Paytm is not giving. That is your bank, okay? Your bank. So, what? How it will work? If there is Paytm. What Paytm will ask? It will ask you first to, to add the money from your bank. You have to link your bank. Right? How this money is there in your bank? You went and you deposited the money in your bank. Right? So that is how the money is present in your bank now. That money, say for example 1000 or 2000, you will send to Paytm. Then Paytm will store in, in its wallet. Paytm wallet on a centum. Why you will store in wallet? If you store in wallet, Paytm gives some discounts. Right, that is the purpose. Otherwise, why will we store in Paytm? Right, we store only in our bank. So, Paytm says, or phone pay says, what they will give? They say that store here, I will give discounts. For every transaction, I will give rupee or half rupee as a discount. So, they will do this and we will do that payment. Once you store it, then for the transactions that you are doing, this amount will be deducted. Right? Which means, though it is a virtual currency, the currency is now virtual. This is not physical. Physical is this. Now it has transformed and it has become a virtual currency, means digital currency. You have transformed it into digits and you have been doing it from that. Now this is backed by your physical asset, that is the amount in your bank, right? And this money, whatever that you are using in your payment, that is pegged at some price, that is the price of rupee in your dollar. Say for example, if there is 1000 rupees, that 1000 rupees is equal to the 1000 rupees which is being circulated in your economy, which means the currency that you are using in the Paytm, it will be pegged at the same value on which you are using the currency in physical asset. One way rupee note may be china okate, way rupee note, way rupee transaction jason okate, because that thousand rupees is pegged at the same value where the market is functioning in the market in the form of cash. Are you understanding? Now this rupee depends upon the dollar value. Right, one dollar is equal to sixty. One dollar is equal to seventy. One dollar is equal to eighty. If Nirmala Sitaraman is there, one dollar is equal to hundred. Right, this will continue. Are you understanding? So that is being pegged at some physical asset. Which physical asset in the form of dollar? So if you are pegging it, pegging means fixing. Peg means fix. Right. If you are fixing it with respect to a physical asset in the background, then that currencies are known as, what you call them as, pegged currencies. They are also known as stable coins, stable coins, how many of you have seen yesterday's newspaper Hindu? <coughs> yesterday there was an article in this, on this itself, stable coins of USA. They have discussed about this. The first sentence that they gave is stable coins are those coins who which will be pegged at the rate of a dollar, which means which will be fixed at a physical asset called dollar. Dollar can the value into no in equal terms you will have this value. So this will be fixed. That is called stable coins. Whereas unpegged coins are unpegged 
currencies or those currencies which will not have anything in the physical asset anything in the physical asset there will be no backing of physical assets here like dollars so for example uh, consider this if you are playing a game like candy crush right what you will do after completion of every stage they will give you some coins right okay you have won this you cannot go and use that for drinking tea what you can use to unblock the next uh, whenever you get uh, struck up in the next uh, stage uh, in the next level you can use that currency at max that is the only purpose which means the coins that they are giving in the so called candy crush that is unpicked coins understood the difference now unpicked coins will not be having any backup just to create that game whoever is involved in that game say for example if candy crush is allowing that if there are four members or five members playing together candy crush might expand their origin and say that whatever money you have here you can send it to the other person so that other person will reach to the next level together you can win the match so if there is some like that they can do it which means they are developing their own ecosystem just for playing of games are you understanding so this is called unpegged coins they are they are having no physical asset backup got this logic you understood what is this now in a similar system in a similar system at one place in japan they have developed one unpegged coin known as the bitcoin they developed one coin known as the bitcoin now what is bitcoin bitcoin is one type of cryptocurrency which is unpegged with any physical asset bitcoins are those cryptocurrencies which are unpegged at by any physical asset they will be just present in the system just like in the candy crush whatever uh, the coins are available right now look at this say for example leave this say that we are all playing candy crush right and think that we have thought ourselves okay whatever the coins that we have in candy crush we will be using that for our transactions we will be using that for our transactions so this is the ecosystem and consider this there is no other person whatever the trade that we are doing we will be doing only in a particular currency that is called candy crush coins why everyone is playing the game of candy crush and think that whatever you want i am producing whatever uh, i want you are producing so let us imagine this that let us imagine this this is a small ecosystem where we do not have any external uh, contacts and we have been developing an economy where whatever you are producing we are consuming pakkana vaadu paina aadhar padakunda manam edaithe produce chestunnam manaki sufficient ga unnai the only thing is na kavalsinu mee degaru unnai mee kavalsinu na degaru unnai this is the only thing now in this ecosystem as everyone is playing candy crush we can think about this and we can say that okay let's not use money let us use candy crush coins right if you are why there is no external ecosystem here this is our own which coin you have to use what type of coin what is the value that you will decide by yourself then will that amount get circulated here yes it will get circulated because there is no external contact there is no external force here we are free to use in our community are you understanding hence for example this is clearly visible in some uh, uh, software industries where people are doing some software jobs what they will do they will give you some coupons cash coupons so what they say you can use this in any of the reliance store if you are working in reliance they will say that reliance coupons are given to you you can go to a reliance shop whenever you are going to a reliance shop they will give you some discount by showing it which means reliance has developed its own ecosystem of currency here just like how we are trying to develop our own ecosystem of a currency by uh, this game what is that game candy crush coins manam e vidhanga ite candy crush coins lo generate cheyadam anukuntnamo that is the same thing which is done by reliance for its employees are you understanding so they will release many industries are doing now this they are not mixing it with the currency in order to give bonus what they will give they will give you some set of coupons and they will say that go and use and they will have linkages with some 
out uh, say for example, they can go and link with Reliance can talk with DMART and it says that whenever our employees bring this please give this coupon. So, they will mix with some or they will contact with some outside agencies who is running the business and then they will say that these coupons are valid here, these coupons are valid here. Are you understanding? Say for example, if you are doing uh, something called shopping in Big Bazaar, they will give you a separate card, Big Bazaar card, if you know this, right? And that Big Bazaar card, whenever you are doing some transactions, whenever you are buying uh, something from Big Bazaar, they will add some coins to you. They will say that you have been credited this many points, this many points, you are credited this many points. Now, these points can be redeemed at any place of Big Bazaar when you are, you are going and purchasing for the next time. What does this mean? Big Bazaar has developed the, its own ecosystem of coins here in the form of points. Are you understanding? This is quite clear these days, You'll, it will be visible. Wherever they go, they will give it, even Apollo has developed it. If you are buying something in the Apollo, they will ask you, sir, please give your number. Then we will, if you ask, sir, why I have to give number? Why we will ask? Medical shop right. So, we will ask, Indu sir, already messages so soon I would done, then he will tell, sir, message from which I am going to credit so soon I go and see, then we will give, okay, take it and right. This is what we will do. Then obviously, next time when you are doing that uh, transaction, they will say that these many points are there in your uh, in your phone or card, then they will say you, can I redeem it? How he is doing it? He is not giving us money. He has developed his own ecosystem there. Why? Next time when you are going to any medical shop, you will go to that shop only because you have some money there. Are you understanding how they are developing? They are developing this in the form of, so what does this mean? This is saying a clear message that rather than the coins or rather than the money which is in circulation, they are developing their own ecosystem of currency, their own ecosystem of currency, right. So, similarly, why they develop their own ecosystem of currency? Basically, why they develop is here in order to run their business they do. Normally, why they do or why they develop an alternative system to the existing system is when the existing system is not keeping its promise, when the existing system is not keeping its promise, what do I mean by that? Look at this, the currency that is being operated here, operated here, is it full body coins or token coins? The currency that is in operation today, is it full body coins or token coins? Token coins, the currency is token currency because what is token currency? Absolutely. The currency that you are using today, the 2000 rupee note, this is a token currency. What do you mean by token currency? Face value is greater than intrinsic value. This is what I said, which means for the value of work that you are doing, they are just giving you a paper. But what is that thing which is giving credit to this value or to this? It is guarantee, guarantee by a legal authority. This is what it is saying that, okay, I am signing this as a result, whenever you give this, I will give you this amount. By counter signing of the government employees or the so-called government or the so-called RBI governor, this value is getting fiatness or fiat then you call it as fiat currency. This is what I discussed yesterday. Antega. Now, why they go outside this system? They go outside this system if the existing system is failing to keep its promise. If the existing system is fail, failing to keep promise, I guarantee you to pay the bearer this amount whenever you are getting me to this. So, what does this mean? Whenever you are getting this amount to me, to me I will repay you. Now, take that 500 rupees note which is banned, will they accept it if you are going to take to RBI? Why? They said that that is not in circulation. Who is deciding this? Some fellow, my money is, say for example, I have some old 500 rupee notes, 
think that I have 100, 500 rupee notes and I have not converted it during the times of demonetization. Now, what does this mean? This becomes useless now. Why? RBI clearly said after this day, I am not going to keep this promise. Understood? Hence, if the agency is failing to keep up its promise, if the agency is failing to keep up its promise, I will lose trust on the system. And trust is nothing but fiatness. And I said the basic thing that this currency should have is trust. Then only you call it as fiat. If you have observed 10 rupee coins, Padrupal coins good chai, but many people won't accept it. Sorry, chaladu antuntra kodiro koni chotla gelte. Have you ever observed that? Padrupal coins is sir mindi isko manta. Why? Because though it is circulated by the government, still they don't accept it. Why they don't have trust on that? So what is the point here is, whatever the agency will be there, whoever is giving guarantee, as long as it is accepted by the people, it becomes a legal tender. If you don't accept in circulation, then whatever the force that you keep, people won't accept it. Why they don't accept? Because they will be lacking the trust in your money. Are you understanding? They lack trust in your money. Why trust? You are breaking the trust. How you are breaking the trust? By issues like demonetization. Who are you to say that? So far you have said that you will be given this time, but immediately within 50 days you have to withdraw that and you have to go for new currency. Who have given this authority? My work, my sweat, everything you are converting that within 50 days. So you are saying that within 50 days I have to get to you, otherwise it is going to become waste. Not only demonetization, not only demonetization, there is one more concept called depreciation of rupee value, depreciation of your currency. What is mean by depreciation? Because of inflation, the value of the uh, money will itself decrease. So today if I have worked very hard to produce 2000 rupees, tomorrow you are saying that that 2000 rupees value is depreciated, which means today for example if I am buying with my 2000 rupees, if I am an, if I am able to get 20 kgs of tomato, tomorrow you are saying that it will get only 10 kgs of tomato. Why? Your value is depreciated here. Your currency value is depreciated. Then people will lose trust on that currency. Why should I convert into this? Rather than converting it into that, I will convert this into some other thing which have value. Rather than keeping my money in the form of this, I will convert it into the form of gold or immediately I will convert it into something like tomatoes or onions or anything. Are you understanding? So people lose trust because of two things. One, if the agency is unable to keep its promise like constant demonetization moves, you will get really frustrated. Second, your value is depreciating. That is the reason why people do not like to keep money like uh, rupees in their hands. They will convert immediately to gold to the so-called physical assets. Double account in sir, gold kono kono mo, like mo the physical assets lo better mo use sun The reason is this: over a period of time, your currency is going to get depreciated, so they keep that. Let us keep in an asset where the value is going to rise. Similar incident was faced in 2000. You understood now why people go for developing their own ecosystem of money. They develop their own ecosystem of money when they lose trust. And that is the exact reason why RBI governors like Raghuram Rajan, they said Narendra Modi very clearly, please do not do this exercise. If you are doing this exercise, people will lose trust on your money. Leave about getting black money, people will get afraid to circulate this money again. Obviously, that is the thing. Even today, people get afraid to keep the entire money in the banks. Pertama banks law, Mottam Intunte Anta Mottam Cash is Kunachi Bide Bitkuntum. Why? Are you understanding? So don't they lose trust as a result unless and until you have trust you cannot do this. So the same thing was felt in the way back in 2007 in the global financial crisis in the global financial crisis USA's dollar was decreased drastically. USA's dollar was decreased drastically after 2007 global financial crisis. 
many people who is holding dollars their value was depreciated heavily their value was depreciated heavily now they lost to trust on us dollar they lost to trust on us dollar as many people lost to trust there is dissatisfaction hence there is one person from japan an anonymous person who introduced one coin called bitcoin and he said that leave this dollars let us come back to our original system that is called bitcoin system or they said that they have created a new system which will be operating through cryptocurrency there will be no physical currency there will be just cryptocurrency which is unpegged without any unpegged with your dollars or anything there is no pegging here they have created bitcoins just like they create in the candy crush right they have created it and they said that whoever is holding this coins you can operate it so they wanted to develop a ecosystem parallel to the existing ecosystem this is how bitcoins have been emerged way back in 2008 way back in 2008 they are not physical assets they are virtual currencies developed in a software how you can generate that just like playing candy crush you have to do some complex calculations here man candy crush arte e vidhanga coins ostayo bitcoins earn cheyali ante you should have computers by doing some arithmetic calculations they will give you some uh, questions you have to solve that questions after doing questions you will get that money right the questions will be very tough don't do that okay rather than that it is very easy to go and do this upsc even not only that in order to solve that it requires high processing computers so they developed this system how they developed this by using one technology Bit candy crush operates on some technology right oka software undal candy crush operate avali ante similarly in order to operate bitcoins they had one system which is emerging in the technological field that is in the technological field there is one emerging technology and that is called what is that blockchain technology blockchain technology bitcoin is a physical currency blockchain technology is the technology right are you understanding this is currency this is technology on which that currency is operating blockchain is the technology on which that currency is operating now what is blockchain technology again this is something related to technology just in order to understand simply consider this um, i'll try to explain it clearly or simply in the ms world if you are having microsoft word or microsoft excel right mx excel you know right excel where there will be providing some columns some rows and you will be able to do your calculations there right microsoft has developed this technology and that they have named as excel sheet right so in that excel sheet you can write the data you can store the data you can transmit the data right and the data if you are say for example if you are using 100 pages 200 pages at one point of time your excel sheet will be completed so this is something which is advanced to your excel it is something which is advanced to excel type of storage which means whatever the transaction that the world is doing whatever the transaction that world is doing everything today will be stored in this blockchain technology and it gives unlimited access to unlimited technology anyone can come and use this data or use this space and what is the best thing that this technology has is the data that is filled by earlier person won't get erased so blockchain technology is the technology which gives unlimited access for using the tool here the one the thing which is already used will not get erased and subsequently the next player can use or next player can fill his data here so whatever the transactions that are happening say for example 
uh, if you are seeing some movie, if you are seeing some movie, that movie will be of around say for example, 1 GB. That movie has to be stored at some place, right. In a software system, they will store in the form of bits and bytes. So, where they will store, think that this is the technology. The entire movie will be stored here and then when you are, you are watching, you can get access, other person can get access, anyone can get access for any number of times. So, this is something like blockchain technology. For every block, it will be like blocks. If one block is filled, next block will come. If one block is filled, next block will come. But one best thing is, you cannot erase the previous things, which means data storage is forever here. Data storage is forever here. Whereas, in the Excel sheet, you know, after uh, filling it, it requires some 1 GB or 2 GB of your computer space, then you will erase the old Excel sheets and you will find out and you will create new Excel sheets. But here, the space that is occupied is very less, just like your cloud computing and then the data that is going to be, the space that, the data that is going to be available, that will be available forever. So, this is blockchain technology and this is the emerging technology in computers now. This is the emerging technology where almost all the networks are being of using this blockchain technology. For example, Infosys is using it, Apollo is using it, right. Most of the countries, most of the emerging players, they are using this blockchain technology for their computers. The thing that I wanted to say here is blockchain and it is a technology, just like C language, Avidanga technology, no? Java and Avidanga computer language, right. Cloud computing, okay, technology, Microsoft, Excel, okay, technology, Avidanga is okay, technology. E technology in use JC, they have developed bitcoins, right. So, bitcoins operate on blockchain technology. Blockchain technology is a very good technology that gives unlimited access to data, unlimited access to data and it gives it gives complete transparency. Why? Previous year, previous data is not erased here. So, in that as this have these things, they will be using this. Now, bitcoins have developed this. Now, if you look at bitcoins, coming back to these bitcoins, this is about technology leave. If you have not understood this, just remember bitcoin blockchain technology and technology and right. right. Now, bitcoins, let me go back to bitcoins. Bitcoins are unpegged coins, which means there is no physical asset which is being uh, formed here. So, they are generating these bitcoins. How they have generated first, they have given some complex algorithms. The fellow who has created said this, once you crack this, you will get these many coins. So, slowly people used to generate it and people who cannot crack that, they used to buy from the people who have this bitcoins. That is how bitcoins gained traction over a period of time because they lost the trust on the existing system and they went for a new system that is called bitcoins. But the problem with bitcoins is no one is regulating here. Look at here, this is pegged. Paytm, someone is regulating. Who is regulating all this? RBI is regulating. RBI is looking from the top because this is your money which is being used here. But here there is no regulator. Now, why they have developed these bitcoins? I said they lost to trust on the system. Why they lost to trust? Because your money value has decreased, depreciated after global financial crisis. And second thing is, in order to take your own money, government is charging. This is not liked by anyone. Say, for example, recently. Uh, Nirmala Sitaraman said that we are going to introduce GST on check transactions. We need to, uh, recent in the GST council summit, they have kept checkbook use yesterday, we are going to charge extra amount. Uh, some uh, GST slabs. Now, people started blaming uh, uh, Nirmala Sitaraman saying that in order to withdraw our amount, who are you to charge? Are you understanding? Even the bank also will do it. If you have stored 2 lakh rupees or 3 lakh rupees in the bank, right, if you are going to the cash counter, they say that I won't give more than 1 lakh, come tomorrow, come tomorrow. Who are you fellow? That is my money, 
why are you keeping restriction to withdraw my own money? Are you understanding? So, what people feel is my hard earned money is getting challenged by these fellows. As a result, they do not or they do not first of all they do not keep in the bank. Now, this is how the other kinds is they develop. Bank lo betukunde in jasar manam manam generate jas kunamu. Say for example, in villages what they will do even today they will not uh, in many of the villages they do not use currency. Right, they will go for the barter system itself. Into go center, aka tomato luna ya, mirapka luna ya nesi. Right, na de gari guna ya nesi. Which chesi avidi isko nil thunder. Are you understanding? Why they do this? Because of this. Why should we have this currency? So this is one thing which is developed. So one thing in bitcoins is, though it is a virtual currency, as it is unpegged, as it is unpegged, as there is no physical backup. As there is no physical backup and there is no centralized authority to control it. There is no centralized authority. Yavar generate jesaro, yavar use jesunaro, delete le dintlo. Just like Candy Crush, can you identify who is the fellow who has given that coins? Right. You cannot know it. The fellow who has developed that software, he has given you that coins. You do not understand. We will just be playing the game. Who has given that? You not know. Similar thing exists in these coins. There will be no centralized agency to regulate it. As a result, if you are converting your money and keeping it in bitcoins, if someday it is going to lose trust, if someone is not going to accept it, then you cannot ask anyone. At least here you can ask some fellow. Right? R B the Garboy, S B the Garboy, Dharna Jesu, Abdal Bagal, what type of Garboy is double this one out? Here, yes, sir. At max, what you can do? You can break your computer. <laughs> that is the only thing that is available here. That, rather than that, it is not going to come because this is entirely anonymous. You have created just not a system. A law operator to no deal with. Just they will say that here there is money. This is virtual. This is not tangible. Akadundi na dekar undi ankun tonto malane. But at one point, as this is not regulated by any central government, investing in these type of coins is a very risky business. Investing in these type of coins is a very risky business. By observing this risky nature of this coins, RBA has banned use of cryptocurrencies in India. Not this one, uh, bitcoins in India. RBA has banned the use of bitcoins in India because they are unpegged. Understood? Atmaina? Virtual currency render kalga untai, pegged untai, unpegged untai, pegged untai, fixed at some physical asset. Fixed at physical asset and over over than fixed chest on Ali, over on taru fixed chest on ki RBA will be there. Hence, RBA will be responsible for that. On the other side, you have unpegged coins are called bitcoins, which were virtual currencies, which is not pegged as a result. Accepting bitcoins or doing transactions is bitcoins is illegal in India because RBA did not allow you to do this. If you are still interested, that is up to your risk. But RBA, after someone is cheating you, you cannot go and ask any authority. This is what the thing. In parallel, I said there is one technology called blockchain technology. Blockchain technology is something different. Blockchain technology is an emerging field in science and technology, which has many uses, not only in this communication, not only in this uh, um, money value, but it has many applications outside the domain also. Right. So this is the thing. <coughs> Now the latest update in this is government of India. You understood this time. Arthamai na arthamai abhi na rendu gudbet korni. Okati. Bitcoin sani the virtual currency. Bitcoin sani the not back up by any government. There is risky thing. So there is no centralized person who is controlling it because this is a decentralized system. Because blockchain itself is a decentralized system. Anyone can use it. Right. Now bitcoins. It is not regulated by any central government. That is, or central any authority. That is one. Blockchain technology is an emerging technology which is having advantage. This is one. So this is as far as unpegged or blockchain technology and bitcoins are considered. When I say pegged economy, pegged coins, they are pegged at some physical assets. And for example, you have something called stable coins. This is the coins which are. Uh, uh, 
USA government is releasing. There are some names, I will tell you what are those names, right, the names of these coins, like Bitcoin they have named some with some other name, name. right. Now Indian government is going and thinking to launch digital currency, this is the latest thing, digital currency. In the latest budget, government of India said that we are going to launch this digital currency. What is digital currency? I said this is virtual. In electronic media, it will be present. It will not be in the physical form. So this is not a physical currency. This is not a physical currency. Normally what RBA will do? RBA will go to a printing machine. It will print the money and it will release how? First it will release to the banks, people will go to the banks, they get circulated in the economy. This is how physical assets get circulated, physical currency get circulated in the currency, in the economy. Oka printing body on the RBA print yes on the banks kiss on the customers, banks they get killed, these conos taru, customers, customers uh, transactions, they will repeat it. This is how physical asset is being created. Now what RBA is thinking that rather than going for physical currency, because physical currency they thought that to print this it is taking some cost and after printing it there is some chance like spoiling the cards, spoiling the currency, right. If you are not handling them properly, right, your currency notes will get torn off. The third one is, it is a, sorry, yes that is one thing environment. The most important thing is if you are circulating it physically, it is very easy to create some black money, you can store that thing apart without knowing to the tax authorities or anyone, right. You can store away from circulation. So in order to overcome this problem, what RBA is thinking that we will go with a digital currency. What do you mean by digital currency? They want to print it in the form of physical assets, but in the form of digital assets they will create it. Digitally they will say that okay, this is the 100 rupee note you start using it, just like the valid system that we are using. And they say that, say for example, they pass it to the banks, okay, this is the physical assets that I am generating. And banks, when banks, that will be passed to the customers and customers in their bank account, in their credit, in their uh, mobile phone, you will see, okay, this is the amount that I have, right. And I can use that asset, just like what we are doing here. what you are doing here, you are converting that into the form of cash, you are going to the bank, you are depositing, that bank is doing, in that from bank through net banking or through mobile banking, you are doing digital transaction here. You have converted that from physical to digital here. So this is digital currency. Now here what RBA will do, it will not release this, whatever the work that you are converting here, that will be done by the RBA itself. Are you understanding? whatever this conversion that you are doing, that will be done by the RBI itself, which means they do not want to print this digital currency, sorry, physical currency, they want to go for digital currency. This is what the plan is. Actually, this is the proposed thing. We have to wait to see the modalities, how it is going to implement. This will be in current affairs here and there, that is the reason why I am saying. Actually, China tried it at the times of COVID or before COVID, but China dropped this. In the coaching world, they have stopped it. We have taken the clue and we are trying to implement this, but again because of COVID-19 that project was stopped for a while. Just like National Common Mobility Card, Ministry of House, uh, Housing and Urban Affairs, as they have stopped it, they have stopped this also. But you will be studying them here and there in the news, so for that I am saying what is digital currency. Just like the currency that you are using here, RBA will be generating it and RBA will be using it. This is digital currency. Understood? Right? Even if you have not understood, completely fine. Do not worry. Now write this thing, few important points for prelims. You have written merchant discount. In the merchant discount rate, it is the merchants who will be charged and that will not be transmitted to the customers. Right? Sorry? Sorry? Which one? 
Which one? Depreciation of uh, 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 dollars, that is what you are speaking. How you depreciate the value of your currency? Hmm. One second, let him complete. Yeah. This is stable coin. Okay, okay, no problem. Ask it. Right, no problem. You ask if stable coins value is getting decreased. I didn't say stable coins value is decreased. I said what I said. Why you go for why you go for alternative currency? I said that the existing currency will be losing its trust. Yeah. See, if he has asked depreciation of dollars, then that would have been clear. But he has asked depreciation of stable coins. Now, let me make it clear. I did not say you that I did not speak about depreciation of stable coins. Look at this. Now have a look at it. How I entered into that topic is I said cryptocurrencies are digital currencies. There are two types of digital currencies. This is what I said pegged currencies, unpegged currencies. What is pegged currencies? I have explained. And I said that pegged currencies are those currencies which have physical assets in the background and their value will be derived from this physical assets. As a result, you call them as stable coins. The other type of cryptocurrency is unpegged coins, unpegged coins. That is called bitcoins, which means they will not have any backup. Now, why people will go for these type of coins or why people will go for these type of ecosystem? Then I said people is losing trust on the existing dollars or rupees. In the existing ecosystem, they are losing the trust. How they are losing the trust? They are losing the trust. Why they lose trust in the existing ecosystem is the ecosystem is not favoring them. For example, if you are going for demonetization, I have written somewhere there is guarantee. Why black sites are coming in the middle? Good. Uh -huh. Thank you. Lose trust on the existing ecosystem for that I have taken the example this. I said that trust on the ecosystem will lie as long as this is fiat currency. What is fiat currency? Guaranteed by a central authority. Right? If this is not being taken care then automatically people get lost on the trust. This is first thing that I said. The second thing that I said is not only this guarantee but if the value of this itself is depreciating over a period of time. For that I said this example. Say for example, today for rupees 2000, if I am unable to get 20 kgs of tomatoes, but tomorrow the value is depreciated and I am able to get only 10 kgs, which means the value of work that I did here to earn 2000, it is going to reduce to just 10 kgs of tomatoes, which was earlier 20 kgs. Now this is called depreciation. Now this depreciation, why it is happening, if that is the question, I will answer later why this depreciation happens, there is some mechanism here. But as it is losing the uh, value, they do not want to hold into the existing ecosystem. This is second thing. The third thing is, as I said, they are keeping many restrictions to use my own money. My own money. You have to go and stand in the queue, you can withdraw only 1 lakh rupees and they will be charging you if you are withdrawing extra amount. That is your hard earned money in order to withdraw you are taking charge. 
because of this they lost the trust and they are looking for alternative ecosystems. So, they do not go with the existing system and they find with alternative ecosystem. The same thing has happened in US with the dollar because of depreciation in the global financial crisis. In 2017, there was global financial crisis and because of that dollar value was decreased and people lost to trust and some uh, infuriated persons, what they did? They started developing their own coins in the form of bitcoins. This is what I said. I have not linked stable coins with bitcoins. Stable coins is something which is different. I said stable coins will have value which is pegged with some physical asset. I said why people will go for these type of coins called unpegged coins. In that context I have given this, but I have not related stable coins here. But the relation do exist. How? Say for example, if this is the physical asset which is backing my stable coins, if this value is getting depreciated, automatically my stable coin value also gets depreciated. That is the system or that is the link which is present. But I never said stable coin is losing the trust as a result people are going to the so called uh, bitcoins. Stable coins are it itself em in the emerging now. There is no uh, use of stable coins today. Right. This is what I said. Understood. If you have any doubt, you can ask me uh, uh, at the doubt stage. Any other question? Write this. <coughs> Payment Infrastructure Development Fund, Payment Infrastructure Development Fund, Payment Infrastructure Development Fund, Payment Infrastructure Development Fund. In order to understand this, did you understand merchant discount rate? I have said, right. Now, in order to reduce the transaction cost on the merchants. This is the cost that is kept on the merchants for using the point of sales of machine as a result merchants are not ready to use point of sales machine as a result digital India program is not working here or less cash economy is not working. In order to promote the merchants or to reduce their burden, to reduce their burden, how they reduce their burden? In order to reduce their burden, government of India has launched this mechanism that you have written. Payments Infrastructure Development Fund. They have created a separate fund and they are giving money from that fund to the merchants. Whatever the money that merchants are keeping, they will be repaying it to the merchants. It is a 500 crore fund. It is a 500 crore fund, RBI and banks and banks to encourage mer merchants to encourage merchants in the small towns, in the small towns and villages, in the small towns and villages, in the small towns and villages to adapt to, to, to adapt to, to adapt to, to card transactions, card transactions, to adapt to, to card transactions. to reduce MDR, they have launched this. Simple. This was launched in 2020. Just in order to know what exactly is this payment infrastructure development fund, this is the fund to reduce MDR so that people will be getting incentives to use this point of sales machines. Digit, uh, next pay, next uh, side heading, RBI digital payment index. RBI digital payment index. This is the index launched by RBI. This is the index launched by RBI since, since 2018, since 2018 to measure, to measure, to measure annual growth, annual growth in digital payments annual growth in digitalization of payments, annual growth in digitalization of payments. Tasera, just in order to know how fast we are digitalizing the things, 
RBI will be developing it, just an index. So what they will ask, digital payment index is released by whom? That will be the question. It will be released by RBI. Every four months they release it, right? The frequency of this index will be every four months. Or for every four months they release this index. Next side heading, cryptocurrency, 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 a digital, digital or, or virtual currency, digital or virtual currency created and stored, created and stored by using blockchain technology, by using blockchain technology cryptocurrencies can be cryptocurrencies can be by using blockchain technology cryptocurrencies can be pegged currencies pegged currencies or 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 pegged can be pegged currencies or unpegged currencies or unpegged currencies pegged currencies are those currencies pegged currencies are those currencies which will be in crypto form which will be in crypto form which will be in crypto form crypto form and virtual form okay which will be in crypto form whose price is backed up by whose price is backed up by a physical asset a physical asset for example for example for example usa released a stable coin USA released a stable coin named as named as Tether T E T H E R T E T H E R Tether Facebook released a stable coin Facebook released a stable coin called Libra L I B R A Facebook Libra base coin BASC base coin is another stable coin base coin is another stable coin actually just to know this when the rhythm peaks don't they will ask Libra face uh, uh, this tether these are in use what are they and they are not going to make a one of them then so that is stable coin right that is the only thing base coins are another stable coins so examples of stable coins are Tether, Libra, base coins. Just remember that, okay? They will ask Tether, Libra, base coins are new are in use. What are those? They might ask, right? We'll confuse it. It can be gold, it can be dollars, or it can be any commodity, depending upon the so-called the agency who is going to release. If it is Facebook, who is going to release? Like Facebook has released one currency called Libra. What they will do? They will look at the Facebook stocks in the stock exchange. What is their uh, value? They will peg it at it. If USA is releasing it, they peg at dollars. If Britain is doing it, they peg at some gold. So depend. A physical asset can be anything, depending upon the agency who is going to release. Right? That is the thing. digital currency yes this is also the same thing they wanted to develop but the thing is we have not yet developed it right they have developed it we are in the dip see the thing is see if there is no trust in the physical asset digital currency is not going to work digital currency works only when there is trust are you understanding No, no, I, I, I didn't say that. 
the concept of virtual currency or digital currency has come into being because your physical currency has some drawbacks like your currency will get soiled up or torn up or they can be easily uh, subjected to robbery or I said few things. Say for example, there will be no accountability when you are transacting. In order to overcome this problem, they have developed one currency that is called digital currency. Just like as there are problems in the barter system, you have come to commodity system. Just like the commodity system has some problems, you have come to metallic money. As metallic money has some problems, you have come to paper currency. As paper currency has some problems, you have entered into virtual currency. This is the link. Right. We did not enter into virtual currency, the same answer. We did not enter into virtual currency because we are losing the trust on the uh, currency. Trust like both the virtual currency and sorry, physical currency and sorry, nothing will work. Everything works only on trust. As long as it is backed up, as long as it is fiat, that will work. Otherwise, people won't convert their amount into some other form which they do not have trust. Are you understanding? That is the thing, the same co the same answer for you also. Yes, they will be pegging with the same thing, rupee. Already you have cash in the current economy, right? They wanted to reduce the availability of cash by giving this. Now look at this. You are already using through digital payments, but that digital payments, how you are getting it? You have some cash in the bank. Right now, what they wanted to do is they do not want to have this cash at all. They wanted to convert everything into digital and they wanted to give it to you. There, there will be no physical asset. No, that not that. There will be no physical currency. Physical asset and that will be backed up by physical asset. What do I mean by physical asset backing? Say, for example, they will look at the gold reserves that are available and then they will print this money. Printing that money will be based on physical assets. Asal money print jay set up a physical asset in base chess con print jess her. A print jay set amount ni me work in base chess con mix circulate jess on to say for example if you have done 2000 rupees work I will give 2000 if you have worked for 1000 I will give 1000 if you have worked for 5000 I will give 5000. From where I will give from the money that is printed money ala print jay set based on some physical asset. What will be the physical asset gold or dollars or rupee value depending upon the value they will give. India lo deni base chess con is star even ni you have forex reserves right there will be in forex reserves what is the currency that you have based on that rbi will be printing it i'll come to that point when i come to the rbi right how they are going to print the money but pratidhan ki money print cheyal ante ne you should have some physical assets yes now the thing that is the thing that is the thing what i said here look at this i'll, I'll answer first let's try to understand this what what he has asked this is what i said how money is released. If you do understand this, you will understand whether that is physical money or whether that is digital money, the same thing. I said here one thing, first there will be RBI, there will be RBI which will be printing the money, RBI will be passing it to the banks and banks will be giving to the customers. When the customers are coming into the ecosystem, they will be trading in that money. This is how money is being circulated. There will be one agency which will be printing that will be passing here from here they will get here. How? Say for example, if I am working in this in this uh, AKMIAS, now what I will do? For that I will take money from where they are getting money. In order to run the business they should have asked it somewhere, right? Either they should have got from some other person or they should have went to some agency which is generating that amount. So they will go to that agency. Who is that agency? Banks are the investors. Investors has to get from somewhere called banks. Otherwise, without printing, how can money will come here? So, that is coming through this route. RBI will be printing, banks will be passing banks to customers. And then customers will be circulating among themselves. This is the route. Now, what they say? Rather than printing it, they say that we have, we are not printing, but they will say that this is in the form of digital currency. And they say that, okay, I am passing this much amount of digital currency to the banks. And this bank will give to the 
investor who is going to the bank, he will say that at the, when the investor is going now, they are giving in the form of physical asset. Now they say that, sir, please check out your mobile phone. I have transferred this much amount. They have created a physical uh, digital currency and they are saying that I have passed it to you. Now this person who is the investor, he will come or she will come to the market and she says that whenever she is doing transaction, she says that I am passing this amount. Just like what you are doing in Paytm or uh, the so called phone pay. The only difference is here this is directly released by RBA itself. So the money that you are going to get, there is no physical money which is present in this transaction. They will generate only in the terms of the so called virtual currency itself and then they will pass it. This is what the thing and that is the reason I said whenever they are getting physical asset or whether that is virtual asset, this is the thing that can be processed. Did you understand now, right? Now the problem here is. One thing is many people does not know how to operate it. Right? What about the common man who is going to use it? That is the first thing. The second thing is many people does not have this digital access even today. Right? If you are completely converting this into digital ecosystem, it will be just like killing the small fish that Narendra Modi did during the times of demonetization. Getting the point? So that is why they are going very slow here. This is just at the proposal stage, then they will do some experiments. And after doing some experiments, they might release it. Maybe after 20 years or 30 years, you might see this type of ecosystem. But how that is generating? This way. Now, what you will do? Say, for example, if you are going to the, uh, if you, say, for example, if you are employed under me. Now, what I say? Please check, sir. Uh, I have transferred your the amount. Please check your bank. I have transferred you. Say, for example, if you are employed at me with 60,000 rupees per month. After the month, I will transfer that. How? I will don't give you cash. I will directly say, please check in your bank account, I have transferred it. You will check and you will say, yes sir, 60,000 has come. I have not given physical asset to you, physical cash. Now, 60,000 has reached you. Now, what you will see? You will do the same transaction with others when you are going outside. This is how they circulate. Slowly, they wanted to remove the currency and they wanted to introduce this form of currency. That is called physical currency. That is what they wanted to get, but it takes time in India. Two questions answered, got it? Even if you are not understood, leave it, no problem. Now, cryptocurrency, what do you have written? Whenever I say leave it, what do I mean? They, they are not going to ask this type of questions, right? If they are going to ask, I do not leave it first, okay? Now, and anywhere, uh, you know, you will understand that when it is being used, used like Uchina Pratamotunde. We do not understand. If I need to explain bitcoins, it would take much of the time if you do not know this operating system called Candy Crush. Candy Crush and Arkabut connect out. But if there is no ecosystem like that, it is very difficult to understand. If I if this is the concept way back in 2015 or 2014, in order to understand these type of payments, it is very difficult. But today it is very easy because the system is being used. So, do not need to worry about that. Anyways, India government has much time for implementation of those things. What do you have written? The second one is unpegged coins, unpegged coins. The second one is unpegged currency or coins, which will not be, which will not be back up by any physical asset which will not be backed up by any physical asset. For example, for example, bitcoins, bitcoins, Lakshmi coin, bitcoins, Lakshmi coins, light coin, L I T E C O I N, light coin, these are the new versions, light coin. If you want to generate for your own ecosystem, you can also keep ACOM coins, right? You can generate and you can use for your transactions, right? Light, L-I-T, light coins. Next one, blockchain technology. Blockchain technology. Oh, sorry, before that, write this point. 
bitcoins are decentralized virtual currency bitcoins are decentralized virtual currency bitcoins are decentralized are you understanding what do you mean by decentralized there will be no centralized authority to control it like rbi decentralized virtual currencies generated through generated through complex computer software complex computer software full stop in india in india in india rbi has not recognized do, do you want me to repeat that generated through complex computer systems complex computer systems full stop in india reserve bank of india rbi has not recognized has not recognized bitcoins as has not recognized bitcoins as legal tender legal tender next side heading blockchain technology blockchain technology it is a it is a secured sccu already secured decentralized database database that that acts as that acts as a public ledger a public ledger ledger a public ledger which can be inspected by everyone which can be inspected by everyone but no single user but no single user can control but no single user can control applications applications that depend on basic that depend on basic features of blockchain that depend on basic features of blockchain can be developed can be developed without anybody's permission can be developed without anybody's permission this is what the story about currency is so i have not said about digital currency that india government is going to launch if it is launched it will be known to everyone so no need to write it so this is the program or this is the thing or the first part of your money what is money what are the functions of money primary function secondary functions why people hold money because of this three things speculative uh, function transactive motive speculative motive precautionary motive there are three motives right and then what we discussed what is the evolution of money how money has evolved from barter system to the so called cryptocurrency in that we have discussed these things today the world has grown to such an extent that we are using everything in digitalized format or in the form of digital currency but in the form of digital currency how this is backed up by some physical asset we are using some pegged type of digital currency right so we have come to this stage the next stage of this money evolution is going to be the so called digital currency entire digital currency where there will be no presence of the physical currency at all maybe after 50 years or 60 years down the line you might find out that just like as we are not finding today the old system like bit barter system or metallic money this is going to our physical currency is going to be vaporized and a new system is going to occupy this transactions uh, in the money this is called money now in this what is important for prelims functions of money to rbi act 1934 coinage act 2011 what are the things that are there npci blockchain technology bitcoins stable coins full bodied currency token currency 
and what are the currencies that was what were the coins that were released by various kings during the times of medieval and ancient history that you have to study in your history right that is one uh, question that they might ask yeah only these things right so these are the questions here tomorrow i'll continue with a new concept which is again related to money who is going to supply it and how that money is getting circulated and how you are going to measure which is in circulation what are the impacts of that money which is being circulated in the economy we'll study these things right so again that is one important topic if you have any questions i'll be here for 2 minutes or i'll be down you can come to the hall and you can ask me right i'll be winding it up thanks for joining have a nice day